Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be solving the leak code question, construct the rectangle. So in this question, we're going to be given the area of a rectangle and we need to come up with the width and length for it. So I know, so given an area, you can have several different widths and lengths, but we have a few conditions over here. So the area of the rectangular web page you designed must equal to the given target. Okay, so that's the first condition, obviously. So the width and length, when you multiply them, should equal to the area. Second a condition is the width W should not be larger than the length L. So what that means is the length is always going to be equal to or greater than the width. So notice how it can be equal to as well. And the third one we have is the difference between the length L and the width W should be as small as possible. So over here, uh, so we can have several different combinations, but we want the combination which has the least amount of difference. So the most optimal solution would be in the case where the length and the width are the same. So let's just go to our uh, drawing pad over here and see how we can solve this. So let's just say we have a rectangle over here and this rectangle has an area of 20. Before that, just real quick, kind of like a quick reminder. So the area is nothing else but the length multiplied by the width. And we also have a condition over here, which is uh, the length is always equal to or greater than the width. So we need to make sure that length is equal to or greater than width. Okay. So what are some possible combinations for in this case? So we have the number 20 and let's just take a look at it. So the area is 20 and we're, we'll write the length over here and we'll write the width over here. And like we see over here, the width is going to have a smaller value. So let's just start off with the number one. So we have one year. And so to get to 20, we're going to uh, multiply that with uh, 20, right? So 20 multiplied by one equals to 20. So this is one combination. Another combination is when our width has a value of two. So when our width has a value of two, uh, we need something, the length, which, so let's just call this X, for example. So X multiplied by two is going to be equal to 20. So in other words, that X value is just 20 divided by two. So 20 divided by two is equal to 10. So the length over here is going to be 10. So then we have one last combination, which is the number four. So we have four over here and we'll have five over here. So over here, let's see the difference between the length and the width. So over here, we have a difference of 20 minus one, 19. Over here, we have a difference of eight. And over here, we have a difference of one. So which one has the least difference? Obviously this one over here. So this over here is going to be our answer. We're going to have five as our length and we're going to have four as our width. So this is what we're going to return. But so now that you understand the question, how can we actually come to this number without looking at each and every single combination until we find a good or valid combination? So let's just see how we can do that real quick. So let's just look at an example where our area is going to be equal to 100. So when our area is 100, let's try to find the length and width. And to do that, a very simple thing we can do is we can do the square root of 100. Right? And the square root of 100 is going to be 10. So in this case, so this is going to be our perfect scenario. Over here, the length is equal to 10 and the width is equal to 10. So the difference between them is 0. And when you do 10 multiplied by 10, you get a value of 100. So in this condition, you meet all of our cases. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to be using the square root in order to find the best solution. So in our previous example with 100, when you square root it, you get an integer right away. But what if that's not the case? And that is not always going to be the case. So let's take a value of 200, for example. And when you do square root of 200, let's see what we get. OK, so I'm just going to open Python real quick. And over here, let's import math in order to do the square root function and math dot square root and we want to find the square root of 200 so the square root of 200 is 14.14 right so 14.14 so over here we're going to have our first check if when we get when we perform the square root of this number and it is an integer value right and in that case we know that we found a value where the length and the width are the same and we're just going to return that but this is not the case so what we're going to do over here, we're going to convert this to an integer. 
So let's just see what that looks like. So I'm just going to do the same thing here. But instead, I'm going to give our output instead of a floating point as an integer. So int math.square root 200. Now we get a value of 14. So 14 is going to be our starting value. So this can be the length or the width. So as of now, we don't really care what it is. So considering that this is one of the parameters, what is the other parameter going to look like? So now let's find the other parameter. So to do that, we're just going to do 200 divided by 14. And in this case, we get 14.28. And this value is also not an integer. And because it's not an integer, that means that 14 is not one of our answers. So in this case, we're going to decrease our answer. And now let's go to 13. So 13 is going to be one of our parameters. And the other one is going to be 200 divided by 13. And this is again a floating point value, 15.3846. Again, this is not an integer. So we're going to decrease our value by one again. So now we're going to have 12, 200 divided by 12. This is again a floating point. This is not our answer again. So now we're going to decrease it again. 200 divided by 11. And now we're going to decrease it again. And now finally, we found a number which is an integer, 20, right? So when, so we kept go decreasing it by one. And then we found the number 10. And it corresponds to a value of 20. So when you multiply 10 and 20, you get a value of 200. And this is actually the best uh, value we can get in terms that we satisfy this uh, condition over here and by the term that the length and the width are closest to each other. So 10 and 20 are our two parameters. And which one is going to be what? And to do that, it's pretty simple. So you can look at a condition here. Length is always greater than width. So what are the bigger value over here is 20. So that's going to be our length. And the smaller value is 10. So that's going to be our width. And we're going to output that. So let's see how we can do this in code. It should be a lot easy to understand. Okay, so like I said earlier, we're first going to find the square root of our area and we're going to convert it into an integer. So int math dot square root and then we're going to square root the area. So now we're going to get the square root of the area. And what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of a while loop. So while true. And what we're going to do over here is we're going to look for the other value. So in the beginning, X is going to be one of the conditions. And now let's look for the other condition. And let's just call that Y. And this is going to be the area divided by X. And over here, we're going to check whether the value of Y is an integer or not. And we can do that very simply using a Python method called is integer. So it's going to return true if it's an integer. So if Y is integer, then in that case, we know that we have found an answer. And now we just need to uh, decide on which one should we output. So if the X value is greater than the Y value, then in that case, we're going to return X uh, first, and then we're going to return the Y value. And one thing we need to do over here, we need to return int Y, because um, our answer is only accepting integers. And if you return it as a floating point, it doesn't say it's correct. And if this is not the case else, we're going to return the exact opposite. So we're going to return, sorry, return. And then we're going to return int y comma x. Okay. So that is in the case that we do, we found a proper answer. And if that is not the case, we're going to decrease our x value by one. And we're going to go all the way up here again. And we're going to keep doing that until we reach a point where we find some valid answer. And in that case, we're going to end up returning either this or this, depending on uh, the conditions over here. So let's submit this and let's see what happens. So submit. Okay, so our solution did get accepted. And finally, do let me know what you thought about the video. And don't forget to like and subscribe if this video helped you. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.